Hello, one and all. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's well and having an absolutely splendid day because it's actually beautiful weather, which is quite surprising, to be fair. Now, today, I'm going to be talking about counselling and what the process is actually like. I know there's a lot of misconceptions about counselling. If you're considering it or if you've had like a negative experience in the past, it can be quite intimidating and quite scary and you may not believe in the process. And that is completely understandable and okay because there's a lot of myths and a lot of misconceptions in the media. But I wanted to talk about the process from the perspective of someone who's been through it, has had problems in the past and has dealt with them through this process and has come out a better person. Now my experience is not the same as everyone else's and I can't predict exactly what each counsellor is going to do for each person because there's so many different approaches to mental health. But I can talk about my process and how it changed my life because I genuinely think counselling can help anyone and to some extent any problem because there's so many brilliant people working within that sector and they're trying to help people and they're trying to change lives. And uh, speaking of trying to help people, that's what I'm trying to do on this channel. So if you want to go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, uh, ring that little notification bell thing, that'd be, um, that'd be class. Cheers. So I think counselling is something that's often misconceived in the media. It's not like you walk in and they solve your problems for you. Effectively, what they'll do is create an atmosphere in which you feel free to express your emotions and that allows you to process them. And then they give you the tools to deal with those emotions. They do not solve the problem itself. They give you the power over your emotions, not to say that you won't experience them, but they won't impact you so negatively and they won't lead to sort of holding you back from experiencing things or progressing. Because a large part of mental health is where you don't feel control over how you're feeling and what's going on around you. And counsellors will give you this power and give you this feeling of control. Personally, when I was going through my mental health issues, I felt that I can control what people thought of me and I couldn't control how I was treated by everyone else. And counselling just made me realise that I didn't need to. All I needed to have control over was my emotions. So those first stages of counselling are genuinely just raising awareness of your emotions and your thought processes. It's learning what you're feeling and accepting it and accepting the fact that it's going to happen and it's not something you need to fight. You can't get over a problem without accepting and understanding what the problem is. And this part of counselling is quite a tough one because you have to face what you're feeling and it can be very confusing and it can be a very long process as well. But if you're with the right counsellor, they'll create a environment in which you're comfortable around them. You treat them like another person, not this superior force who's better than you. Because I know a lot of people have experienced counselling and they felt very patronised and like they're being treated as a patient rather than a person. And that's where you need to find the right counsellor. Because personally, I loved being with my counsellor, which is really weird because obviously I'd get emotional, I'd get upset, but I felt so safe and I felt I could be vulnerable talking to them. Because saying things out loud that you're feeling or thinking can really help First of all, make them real, but also help you process them because you need their chance to process how you're feeling before you understand how to deal with it. Personally, I feel that whenever I talk about my thought processes or my emotions, it really helps me understand them and it helps me sort of put all the different links together because when you've got loads of information sources running around in your head, it all seems like a bit of a bundle and they're all sort of tied up. And when you talk about them, it forces you to understand them because unless you understand it you can't say it and this stage of raising awareness of the problem is often one of the most important ones because a lot of people don't understand why their thought processes are leading to them feeling worse but ultimately your thought processes lead to your emotions which lead to your behavior and then that links back around so when you are struggling with mental health you're likely to think these negative things and then feel bad about it and then avoid that, which furthers your mental health issues. And this stage will take time because often those thought processes are built in and there's something you really need to uncover, which is why in all the TV shows, they're always like, and how does this make you feel, Josh? And then like the other Donnie's like laying down like this and they're like, I don't know, Doc. Sorry, that was really bad acting. I don't know why I did that. But that sort of is the case in um, a slightly different way because they're trying to uncover those thought processes. There's a, they're trying to uncover what you genuinely feel because you need to understand that before you deal with it. 
So once you're on the way to sort of understanding how you're feeling and possibly why you're feeling it, this is when they may start to introduce those tools that you can learn to help deal with those emotions. But ultimately, they're not gonna do it for you. It's something you need to do and it's something that you need to practice as well because you're not trying to avoid these emotions. You're just trying to sort of downplay the severity of them and make sure that they don't impact you so significantly. You will not get to a point where you don't feel things and where you don't get upset because it's, it's human nature to feel upset. You can't get rid of that. The counsellor will teach you that ultimately there is no positive or negative emotions. They're just reactions and evaluations over to your perception of something. So when you feel down, it may be your body encouraging you to do something to make you feel happier. Or when you feel anxious, it may be your body encouraging you to get out of that situation. They are learning experiences and they can teach us about ourselves, and they can teach us about the situation. Ultimately, they're not negative things, they just feel a bit crap. You don't want your emotions to overcome you, yes, and that's why you learn to deal with them and sort of downplay them. But you also want to experience emotions because you can learn from them. So one tool I actually learn, and there is, there is huge amounts of tools they can teach you. It's not like there's a limited amount and it will depend on the counsellor first of all, and then your issue as well. But one of my main problems was that I struggled to view a situation objectively. And I would always perceive things in a negative way because of everything that I'd gone through and that led to worsening my mental health because I'd avoid those situations that could possibly be beneficial. So what the counsellor did was when I was in a situation where I was feeling especially anxious I'd write down everything that was factual so like the colour of my shirt or what I, what time it was or something something like that or what I was objectively about to do and then my emotions as well. So when I separated them it lets you sort of take a step back from what you're feeling and understand that you've perceived these things that are happening and created an emotional response. And then by taking a step back, you can say, perhaps there's a different way I could have viewed this situation. Or I could have viewed it as an opportunity, for example. And then doing that over time, gradually, you start to do that in the moment rather than just when you write it down. And you also start to notice that habitually, Maybe you react in a more negative way or more pessimistic way or a more anxious way. And understanding that you're doing that and challenging it is the process of getting rid of these habitual thought patterns. And this is something that will take a lot of time because if it is habitual, then it's built into you and it's something you need to constantly challenge and constantly work for. But it'd get to a point where I'd say I'd get upset about something I'd get upset for a little bit, of course, that's going to happen. But then I'd find myself challenging it and going, actually, maybe there's another way of viewing this. And it seems really simple. but it, And, and it, it, it is, in essence, but it's not easy to do, like, by any means. And by challenging your thought processes, you start to engage behaviours that are more beneficial for you. As I said, when you're struggling with mental health, a lot of the time you don't engage in those beneficial behaviours because you're worried about them or because you don't understand that they'll be beneficial. So you start to engage with them as you challenge these thought processes, which ultimately helps you feel better. In my case, it actually raised awareness that perhaps the people around me at that time weren't the most beneficial for my mental health and they didn't particularly help me. And a lot of the time it'd actually be detrimental to be around them and they'd make me feel worse. So as I started to challenge these thought processes where if they would be mean to me previously, I would have gone, okay, I need to try harder for them to like me. I started challenging it and going, perhaps they just don't appreciate me for who I am. Effectively, the goal of counselling is to sort of bring mental stability, change those negative habitual thought patterns and ultimately engage in behaviours that are beneficial for you. It gives you the ability to cope with those ups and downs because there's no way of avoiding them. You just need to make sure that you're either learning from them or they're not impacting you so negatively. The counsellor wants to give you the tools to do this. They won't do it to you themselves. There's no way that they just say things and you feel better. It's something you need to practice and something that will take time. And I know if you've had a negative experience, it's easy to disregard it. But if you believe in the process, if you give it time, and if you genuinely practice these things, it can really help. Our psychological processes largely affect, if not control, our bodily processes. And this is these bodily processes what makes you feel negative. It's the hormones, it's the, the butterflies you get in your stomach before you do something that's scary. 
and we can change the, the perceptions of these events and these feelings and counselling will help you do that and eventually you'll start viewing them in a more positive way and it won't impact you as much. And whilst I, like everyone else, still experience issues and naturally a lot of those issues are related to what I went through, I also view it in a more positive way and I know that I can learn from these experiences and that it's also completely normal and it's so natural to get down and it's not something I should be ashamed of. Counselling is something that has actually changed my life for the better and I feel so much better because of it. Just give it time, believe in the process and it will it will help you a monumental amount. Anyway, that's me. I know there's so much to talk about with counselling and I've really struggled recording this video because there's so many things I want to include. But if anyone has any questions about the process, please feel free to ask me. I'll leave links in the description below on how to get access to counselling. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, that's me. Please remember to keep showing support because it does mean a lot. Um, I'll see you later. Love you all. Peace out, my dudes. Oh, God.